Australian Cross Country Championships under 23 men's race. 85 competitors from 27 countries in this competition. Further away, just one short lap on this occasion, but a very quick start from the looks of things. Uh, it's Portugal and Swiss athlete out on the far side, Noel coming across very quickly as well. That's Nada of Portugal, Greek athlete, well, can't recall Greece ever winning a medal at these championships, but he's showing very strongly at this stage. Soto is Mohamed. We can see some of the French team. Slightly new apparel for the French this year. And then Ukraine as well. A little bit difficult. To, there's an awful lot of teams who are kitted out in very similar kits. Israel, Italy, France, Ukraine, all looking very similar. This is this is interesting to me. I mean, these these two, Emil Caress and Mohamed Mohamed, they I'm fairly sure they do some training together back in Britain, and they might have had a chat here and gone, uh, you know, let's let's not mess around here, let's get it going. And you can see there's a lot of high caliber athletes caught further back in this group with the with the twists and the turns, and perhaps these two are going to get a jump on them. Well, Gressier, I think, got caught a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure whether he was ready for the gun, but he's picked things up pretty quickly and he's moved through into third place at the moment, and we've got. Chan of Turkey. Uh, some of the Germans back in the middle part of the race. Now, Germany so far, we were expecting some of their athletes to show a bit more prominently in the under 20 races. It didn't happen, so maybe this isn't going to be a good day for Germany. But nevertheless, they've got uh, strong competitors in the women's races as well coming up. So, 500 meters, a bit more than 500 meters, I think. Elvin Bibic, the tall, dare I say, lanky Serbian to the fore. Emil Kales, very good triathlete and finished in the top 10 last year in the under 23 race. Well, Hay and Palkow of France, just a bit further back. Emil Danielson, well, he's the son of Johnny Danielson, very well known distance runner from Sweden back in the 80s and 90s. So it's still Mohammed of England, or I should say Great Britain, Northern Ireland. And also alongside him, the much taller figure of Elvin Bibic, who once again was one of those athletes who came to the fore back at the first European Under-18 Championships in Tbilisi when he won the 3,000 metres there and has gone on quite successfully, won medals at European Under-20 and Under-23 level on the track and across country as well. The Irish at this stage, well, not showing to the fore so far. Nice. It's great to see a hard run race like this, isn't it? I think, uh, yeah, you know, I love I love a tactical race, and uh, it's yeah, you know, it's often interesting on the track. But these guys are not hanging around. They're, they're throwing blows. We're three minutes into a, a 23, 24 minute race, and they're throwing blows at each other already. No, this is very, very aggressive. I mean, I thought that the under 20 women's race was an aggressive start, but this is very quick indeed. And Bibic, well, he doesn't have the greatest of kicks. He's going to have to really work hard from the early stages. If he can stay with the likes of Gressier, who it has to be said is the prohibited favourite to take an unprecedented third title in this category. If he's to stay with him, he's going to have to really work hard at this stage in the race. It'll be interesting to see how the other Frenchmen do, because, of course, we've talked about Hugo Hay, but there's Pal Cow, who got a silver medal few years ago in the under 20 race and he's had quite a long way back and he was struggling at the over the first kilometer but looks as though he's picking things up the German up there <laughs> you can see Bibic uh, gesturing at Gressier to, to stop sitting on me <laughs> come here and help me let's let's work together but uh, Gressier looks pretty happy just to sit in there and take a ride well we're going to have some fun a bit later on in this commentary if this stays like this because we have Great Britain's Mohamed Mohamed in third place and Germany's Mohamed Mohamed slightly different spellings very much the same pronunciation just listening to the Portuguese course announcer <laughs> having some fun at that moment well it's already strung out I don't think it, 
any of the races there's been this sort of clear delineation this early in the race just look at that that's the top 10 and the space between all of them yeah, and it really has strung out. And, and I, I do feel with this, like I say, you know, this uphill start and the downhill second half of the lap, how much, how much the athletes are going, well, let me empty the tank to the top of this lap every time and then recover. If you're good at running downhill, it is an opportunity to recover. Uh, so it's almost like fart like running, running, which is a very popular way of training. And, you know, perhaps there's some athletes out there knowing they, they handle that sort of stuff really well and, and see if anyone else does. Well, now quite a significant gap occurring. We have... Bibic, Gressier and Mohamed, that's the one, two, three at the front there. Then a short three to four metre gap before Germany's Mohamed Mohamed. And then another maybe ten metre gap back to the best of the rest in fifth place. With the overhead shot, it's a little bit difficult to see. I think it's one of the Portuguese athletes. Stand to be corrected there. And then the rest of this 85-strong field trailing behind them. And Elvin Bibic, he looks good, doesn't he, at this stage in the race? Long way to go, but... No, he certainly does. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's quite tall for, for these turns and these uh, the inclines, uh, but he seems to be handling them, handling them really well, as we say, in this, this first, first long lap. We'll see. He's got a few more hills to go. Well, Serbia... There's a little bit of pedigree over the years in this competition. We've got Amelia Terzic, we've had... Oliveira Jevtik going back a few years. They've all had an impact on the women's competition. I think we had one or two Serbian medalists in the past in the men's race, but never a Serbian gold medalist. No, I think the only one uh, uh, has been the ones you've mentioned so far. Uh, you know, uh, it is a bit confusing to keep track of uh, some of the Yugoslavian Serbian Montenegro medal tables from the past. Well, it's Bibic at this stage, really working hard at the front. He's, I think this all goes well for Bibic's track season next year if he can stay injury-free because he's really laying down the law in this particular race. Gressier going with him, but now Mohamed Mohamed starting to slip back. Britain's Mohamed Mohamed, Germany's Mohamed Mohamed just behind him. Yeah, this is interesting for me because Bibic obviously it's a game plan, you know, go out and run hard. But the just even that slight that slight moment when he was asking Gressier to come through, you kind of you wonder how much that's playing on your mind now. Is he going to get more and more irritated? You know, I'm, I'm making this race and you're using me, uh, and whether that fuels him or frustrates him is going to be interesting. I think it's the Spaniard Tariqa Navales who's moved oh, wow. up to fourth there, just overtaking Mohamed Mohamed. And again, you know, they've got five long laps to go. I mean, well, three more after this. They're in their second of five long laps. And that's, a, that's a, yeah, that, that, the Spaniard has obviously made a deliberate decision to sit off and then really start to get moving now. And you can see this, there's a large group here, here all running together with the French and the, some of the British athletes there. And um, it's going to be interesting to see if they make it back up to some of those guys. Well, the French numbers two, three and four are quite a long way back. They're in the teens here. In fact, it wasn't uh, Novales. It's the... Abdesanad Okeflan, who was featured prominently at the start of the programme. And I have to say, I would probably owe him an apology because I was a bit dismissive of his chances, and he's in third place at the moment. I wasn't sure that he was actually really of the calibre that, to warrant being one of the favoured athletes, in which case I put my hand up and say I'm very sorry. <laughs> Tedessa Getahon. Get Getahon. Very good track runner, featured in the under-23 championships from Israel. He's also sitting on a really good half-marathon PB of 62 minutes, and you wonder, yeah, this is, an, this is an endurance event, and it's tough with these hills. That might favour him in the second half. Yeah, let's get on on the under-23 10,000 metres silver. Well, it looks as though... Bukhelfen has managed to get up in, in contact with the leading pair. That must have required some effort. And it's now Great Britain's Mohamed Mohamed dropping back. France at the moment leading the team chase with 19 points, followed by Great Britain, Northern Ireland. Spain not showing as well as we'd have expected at this stage, perhaps. Ireland a bit further back, but, well, there's still... A good 13, 14 minutes of running still to go. An awful lot can change. There's quite a lot of Spanish supporters who've come here. It's not that far. 
It's about a five-hour drive from Madrid, and it's a lot closer if you're over towards Salamanca or those towns close to the border. There we see the French flags, and made a big effort to make sure that they're in the right place for this particular <laughs> race. Now, Bibic, just looking around there, again, I'm going to draw on your knowledge here. You're in this position, you're Elvan Bibic, what are you thinking? I think I think you're just trying to relax. You're just trying to trying to keep your rhythm, keep your keep your posture, keep your composure. They, those three all look tremendous going around this course. And uh, yeah, you set a stall out. It's, there's no wind. Um, yeah, the, the mental element of leading can be draining, but if it's a, a choice you want to be there, I think he looks all right. I think so as well at this stage. But we're only really just over a third of the way into this race, so it's still a long, long way to go. Well, I mean, it's still running very, very well. I mean, he's slipped back a little bit. There's Get On. Well, if you want to talk mentality, yeah, you know, Mohammed, Mohammed has got a, he's got a tough task there. He's, he's running on his own. And if he gets caught or passed, or anyone, passed by anyone, it's really got to show that mental resolve. And for me, those guys are sort of queuing up to, to pick off a few of those guys ahead of them. Well, Get On looks as though he's closing the gap slightly on Mohammed, Mohammed as well. It looks as though the distance is slightly uh, being reduced by every stride. But it's still at the front. It's the top three, which is Elvan Bibic of Serbia, followed closely by the two-time defending champion Jimmy Gracia of France and Raquel Fenn of Spain, just tracking them very closely, just hard on their heels at this point. We're starting to see now, after a couple of races, just the surface starting to cut up a little bit. Yeah, and absolutely. I'm somewhat surprised to have, to have seen these guys get this gap. There's some really quality runners behind them, and they they must be really going for it to have for those guys to have let these three run off the front. Um, we just hope they paced it right. That last lap was a 4:26, which is the sort of pace that Inga Britson will run towards in the under 20 race. How how does that compare with some of the previous laps? So you were saying 4:26. I mean, we we thought that they were starting at a fairly he hefty clip. Yes, I think that, that the, the, the two groups that set off, they set a tempo. <coughs> Gressier that was leading for most of the race with uh, Samuel Fickley of Germany trying to hang on to him and he won from the front there so he's trying a different tactic this time and of course we'll see Samuel Fitway coming up in the senior men's race a little bit later on in the program last year's under 23 silver medalist but this year's under 23 race sees Serbia being followed by France and Spain those are the countries in the medal positions in the individual race at the moment I think it's, it's great to see such a range of nations fighting out. You know, I think it's really interesting on this European level to see sort of the battle between the different nations, and it's really hard to predict um, what those battles will be, and it just makes it really exciting. Well, we're coming to the halfway point in the race. Owen Bibic now. I mean, Jimmy Gracier, we know, has got a tremendous sprint finish. Uh, Uckhelfen, well, he's uh, got a 10,000 metres medal from Yevla, but... Uh, probably more of an endurance athlete. Bibic now, I'm wondering what must he do at this point, whether he's actually going to really have to make a surge at some point. What does he do at this point to shake off Jimmy Gressier? He's run so well so far. Yeah, I mean, Bibic has, Bibic has got a great 1,500-metre PB. He's sitting on 3.37. As you indicated, the strength over cross-country is, is fantastic looking forward to the summer. Ah, if I was Bibic, I'd like my sprint finish, but then I've, oh, always, okay. I've always liked a sprint finish. No, that, that, that works for me, <laughs> and it might well work for Elvan Bibic in about 10 minutes' time, but there's still about three and a half kilometres of this race to unfold. We haven't said very much about Uke Helfen. But... Luke Helfen still doggedly hanging on the, the back there, part of a pretty good Spanish under-23 team. Well, now a big, big gap. You have to feel a little bit for Mohamed Mohamed. There's probably about a 30 to 35-metre gap between him and the leading trio, and he's running a very, very solitary race, but he's still holding his form. I'm just wondering whether now he's managed to relax, he's gone through his bad patch, and he's just contemplating and perhaps 
metaphorically, keeping his fingers crossed to see whether perhaps the Spaniard might come back to him or whether he can actually go through, get a second win, another gear, pick it up perhaps at a suitable point in the race. And as we say that, it looks as though Bukalfen is just tiring very slightly. There's a gap just very, very slightly appearing, almost imperceptibly appearing between Bibic, who I think has surged again. It's difficult to tell with the way that the camera angle changes, but you just get the feeling that Bibic has surged again and just put a bit more effort in. And for the first time, I think, in three championships, I don't think Jimmy Gracier looks quite as comfortable as he has done in the past. I think, yeah, I think it's very rare for someone to look comfortable, comfortable on this course. I mean, Bibic is making it look like it's flat, and I can assure you it's not. He's got a slightly unusual running style as Bibic. I mean, he's got this loping... It, it, it's almost a languid running style. I mean, I can think of a few Kenyans who have this running style, but some of the taller Kenyans. I mean, I'm showing my age here, but I can remember John and Googi running a bit like Elvin Bibic. It's not the most, perhaps, conventional of running styles, but it seems to work. No, he seems utterly unaffected by the by the undulation. He looks exactly the same. And uh, we've just got Cipinelli is is starting to work his way through here. You can see he's coming up to Mohammed Mohammed, and uh, he, he, you know, it'd be it'd be great to get lap by lap individual lap splits. But I think he could really be moving through. Well, that last lap, uh, as you mentioned, that uh, Hannah was 4:31. Previously, it was 426, so slightly slower, though I agree with Phil, I think, towards the end of the lap. So. Yes, I think well, it's difficult to tell for us, and I'm sure it's difficult to tell at home, but I get the feeling that Bibic is throwing in every so often a, a, a change of pace, a surge, and I, I don't think Gracier is used to that at this level. France at the moment, as we were expecting, they're the favourites. They've also been the past two-time team champions. 19 points to France at this stage. Well, still two long laps to go, though. That split came just a short while ago, so they, they're well embarked, embarked on the penultimate lap here. And it's still Elvin Bibic and Uke Halfen of Spain doggedly hanging on there in the bronze medal position. He's slipped back a bit, but he's not letting the gap go any while wider. And he's managing to indeed close the gap on that downhill stretch. And Gresse has made no effort at all to get past Bibic. I, th I think... Yeah, I mean, I, to me, he looks comfortable. He doesn't look like he's hanging on like that. The Spanish, like the Spanish athlete, he he looks like he's pretty happy to settle there, and he's just being patient. I think we might see we might see a big move from him coming up. I think that's probably a good assessment of things. A minute or two ago, he did look as though he was just briefly having a bit of bit of trouble, but he does look slightly more relaxed now. He's just blowing a bit less harder, and maybe it's just because Bibic has actually just eased off the pace as well. But as you rightly say, I mean, Bibic has got a great range. He's a 339, 1500-metre runner. I've got a feeling with... And he competes a lot indoors as well. I think we'll probably see him uh, competing on the indoor circuit, both at IAAF and European Indoor Permit Meetings during the course of February coming up. I think it might be interesting in these, in this sort of, not quite the, the last stage, the last lap, but in this intermediate period now, these guys start to watch each other a little bit too much and they might open the door for some of these guys to get back involved in the medals. Well, actually, as you say that, a moment or two ago, a minute ago, and here we see Gracier get rounding Bibic. I'm wondering if this is going to be the decisive surge. Suddenly, Bibic just looks a little bit tireder as Gracier now starts to pull away and then a big gap between Bibic and Hukelfen of Spain starting to appear between the current silver and bronze medalists. This could well be a very decisive surge. Well, we've still got about six minutes of running, about two kilometres of running to go. See, look at that leg speed on that downhill, and that's that's cross-country specialism for you. Uh, that, that takes that takes a lot of effort to to have that technique and a lot of practice. And uh, perhaps he's, he knew he was playing to his strength. And we'll see another severe downhill now here, and uh, the chance to take you know four, five, six seconds out of your competitors on a technical part like that could be could be game-changing. Anu Kalfen now starting to also look a bit tired. Well, Mohammed Mohammed behind him, and we're not quite sure, but we think Mohammed Mohammed still in in fourth place we're looking around the course here because we're a little bit unsighted here places as jimmy gracier comes through hits the bell in 
19.27 unofficially. Time's not being so important, of course, at cross country. Although that last lap was seven, uh, eight seconds quicker than the previous lap. And I think whatever happens, Bibic has, has run brilliantly because don't forget, he's at the bottom of the age group, so he's got two more years in this category, whereas Gressier, um, this has been his last year as a under 23. Well, this has been the point in the three previous races with perhaps a uh, kilometre to go. Well, of course, Inge Britson, it was about two kilometres to go. Battercletti, a little bit under a kilometre. But it's now starting to look as though it could well be France coming through and Jimmy Gressier coming through. Well, Mohamed Mohamed. I'm not. That's not right. <laughs> They've missed the first, Just ignore missed that. The first three <laughs> yes. there. That that's, should be fourth place for Chippenelli, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. You sometimes start second-guessing yourself and wondering whether your, your eyes are deceiving yourself as we were watching Jimmy Gressier there. And they're, they're, this is wonderful organisation, but there's been a few timing and results issues here which we'll try and unravel for you as the afternoon progresses. We are now almost halfway into proceedings here at these 2019 Spa European Cross Country Championships as Jimmy Gressier starting to look really as though he's on his way, well on his way to his third European cross-country title in the under-23 ranks. Well, Gressier, he's won on all sorts of different surfaces as well. He won in very dry but bitingly cold conditions in Slovakia in Samarin back in 2017. Last year, of course, uh, he became a social media sensation with his slightly misconstrued finish line celebrations when he tried to go through on his knees and ended up with the tape around his neck fortunately didn't garrot himself but let's hope he has a, a, ch a chance to do something a little bit slicker in a few minutes and he was also holding uh, the flag the French flag somebody <laughs> yes. handed it to him so I wonder if it, it just all went horribly wrong somebody standing <laughs> by to do that again. ignore the team standings for the moment we do know that France at the moment uh, subject to confirmation are well in the lead in the team standings yeah I mean, but he's kept his sense of humour. I chatted to him briefly in Sweden prior to the European Under-23 Championships, and, uh, and he had a big grin on his face. And, I, and he always promises now that he's going to do something different to celebrate wins in Yevla. He had his arms outstretched. He was doing his French Air Force impression. I wonder if he's got anything up his sleeve here, but I think he's probably going to be rather too tired to do anything too extravagant. Well, I mean, the, the French Air Force back off their strike because they <laughs> can't do that today if, uh, yeah, if that's not in action. Well, certainly no strike action from Jimmy Gressier. He's really put in a full day's work here. As Gressier, just a, in the last kilometer, he's just put so much distance. I mean, I'm trying to roughly guesstimate the distance between himself and Elvin Bibic in the silver medal position. And I make it about 15 seconds at the moment, and the gap is just extending and extending. Gressier, in the last kilometer, has basically put about 100 meters between himself and the man who's run very, very well in the silver medal position, Serbia's Elvan Bibic. Well, we're focusing our attention on Gressier, but I'm sure behind Gressier, a long way back, there's a big battle going on for the silver and gold medal positions. So, Jimmy Gressier, is Chapanelli in there somewhere? Well, we'll yeah, bring you yeah. up today with that. But, <laughs> yeah, we'll focus on what we see in front of our eyes. So, it's Elvan Bibic, the Serbian. He's about 100 metres behind Jimmy Gressier at the moment, is Bibic, though. I think now he's mentally probably settled for the silver medal. Luke Helfen, well, he's got detached now, but he's still holding his form, and he's still in the bronze medal position. Luke Helfen, the Spaniard, set to match his European under-23 10,000 metre title. So he's starting to acknowledge the crowd. He's coming into the home straight. He's just coming round into the home straight now. He can see the finish line. There we get it. There's the French, French Air Force celebrations. Perhaps not quite as extravagant as the ones in Yevla, but Jimmy Gressier, for the third time, is the Spa European Cross Country Championships under 23 gold medalist. Well, and he cheekily just eases up and walks across the line. No sliding, no heroics. Just puts his finger to his lips. He's the boss. Elvin Bibic just runs straight past him. He couldn't do that out on the course. 
but 10 metres beyond the finish line. Elvin Bibic of Serbia takes a well-earned silver medal. Anu Kalfan of Spain completes the standings. So we're seeing Getahon of Israel in fourth, being closed down very quickly by Johannes Ciappanelli of Italy. These are the men just out of the medals. It's going to be Getahon of Israel in fourth, Ciappanelli fifth, Palcao of France in sixth. First Britain through in eighth place. I think that was Mohamed Mohamed after just slipping back after holding fourth place for so long in that race. <coughs> well, I think uh, for any aspiring young cross country runners out there, Jimmy Gressier has put on a masterclass there. I think he could do very well to emulate uh, his tactics, his, his technique on the challenging terrain there. Well, we'll bring you confirmation of standings, we, but uh, no doubt at all about the winner. And for the third time after winning in Slovakia, then in the Netherlands, well, he's been in Central and Eastern Europe, he's been in Northern Europe, and now he's come to Southern Europe, to Lisbon. And for the third time, he's the European under-23 champion. Big smiles from Jimmy Gressier, once again the winner of the gold medal. Quick hug there from one of his teammates, the French. I think he probably knows by now he's going to be standing on the podium, not just for the fifth time, but the sixth time as well. I'm fairly sure, subject to confirmation, we always add in that caveat that France will be taking the team title for the third successive year. As we just take a pause and watch the highlights of the race and Jimmy Gressier taking his third European cross country title. Italy gets the silver medal, and that was a tight fight, but Germany jumps to the bronze medal in this under 23 men's race. Depois de nos países baixos do ano passado, a França ter ganho aqui em Portugal, em Lisboa, a França volta a garantir o ouro nesta classificação por equipas. Segundo lugar para Itália, que assim consegue tirar daquele lugar o Reino Unido e assim ocupar a segunda posição. E terceiro lugar para a Alemanha, surge em quarto lugar para o Reino Unido. Que grande corrida por parte de Jimmy Gessier. No primeiro momento a ocupar o grupo da frente, o segundo lugar foi assim dominando ao longo Jimmy Gressier once again taking gold medal at these championships and there's confirm confirmation. Gressier, well, walking across the line, closed the gap to eight seconds. At one point it was about 15 between Gressier and the silver medalist Bibic. Ukelfen, Abdesamad Ukelfen of Spain taking the bronze medal. A bit further down, well, we were looking at, uh, well, Sudan Hassani, he's had a good winter, finishing down in 11. Ignacio Fontes, the 1500 metres man, a gold medalist at the European Under-23 back in 13th. And then as we scroll through, well, the Irish not showing as well. We had a higher hopes that they were going to feature perhaps couple of them in. Repeating, and I think it almost makes it look too easy. And I, I, I get frustrated by this when someone wins. Uh, here we go, the team, we've got the team result coming up. We've got, uh, yeah, France retaining, confirming France retaining their title, with Italy in second and Germany in third. The Great Britain just outside of the medals there, but uh, great again to see a spread of nations and an unpredictable result. Well, yes, France, uh, once again, dominating the team competition. But it's all going to change next year. It's going to be a changing of the guard. The French are going to 